This rock was discovered in 1830. Since then, its superlative protection and use as a refuge has been tremendous. The Oluma rock, full of igniting propellant, as the Nobel laureate Wale Shoenka noted of the Big Stone, has produced for the good governance and administration of the nation more human resources than any other. As a rock has rubbed off and even overwhelmed Ulumo, Ulumo rock, and really, shouldn't it be the other way around? Cotton State, of which Abel Kuta is current flag bearer, is in truth a nation by itself, one of the most ancient and cultured the people of Ogun State are proud of the stone, the meek modern stone. Even then, the rock has not stopped yielding hybrids. The latest joining the long list of the best achievers from the Gateway State is a world-renowned engineer and populist. People call him Tony, but he is now a chief of the presidential Owo Kingdom. Ashiwaju, Taiwo, Anthony, or Jeshina. He is an international consultant and manager of men and resources with over 30 years experience in environmental engineering, construction management, manufacturing, public service governance, corporate governance, and insurance. The renouncement of this environmental guru as one of the best 50 engineers in 50 years of Nigeria independence by the federal government did not take those who know him by any surprise. Tony was born twins into the popular home of the Ojeshinas in Owu Abeokuta in 1954. Raised among his kids and kings in Wasimi and Eleri Adubi, the beginning was humble. As a student of the famous Baptist Boys High School, the brilliance and high intelligence quotient of the rascally Tony was the talk of the town from Okegunya. So we were born into a family of Ojeshinas. Our father was a teacher before he became a lawyer. And our mother was a teacher for 36 years. So you could imagine the kind of discipline that we went through as children. That this discipline was so much, it wasn't only our parents disciplining us, it was one senior disciplining the next. And uh, if I have to tell you, of all my siblings, I happen to be the last one of the family, of all my siblings, the person I feared most was this one. <laughs> Do any rubbish, my brother will smack me. I remember a day in March 1965. We were at the Baptist Day School. My brother, maybe play after playing in the school, forgot his pair of sandal in the school. Then we came home. Then he remember, my mother was in the kitchen, and he said, the young Anthony Ojechina had his higher school certificate HSC at the first American model high school in Nigeria, the comprehensive high school Ayeturu, where he was prepared by fate to live with the Americans. He proceeded to the St. Mary's University, Nova Scotia in Canada, where he bagged combined degrees in chemistry and chemical engineering. Well, when I graduated in the U.S., they were, while I was in my final year in Canada, uh, they were, we called them consultants, that the, 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 the businesses sent around to go and interview students in the final year. And uh, some came from the U.S. to Canada. And of course, I was fortunate to have been picked by one of them uh, and to come and work for them. So I went directly from Canada to go and work for a company in the U.S. and engineering consultancy outfit. And uh, I worked for them. They were on contract then with the city of Houston. And I worked as a field engineer for them for uh, uh, about two years. 
then they had problem and uh, because the city did not renew their contract uh, and of course I now started job hunting and at that time I had gotten very interested in the issues of environment because of my background uh, and so what I did then was uh, my CV was out uh, with different consultancy agencies or employment agencies and uh, I at the same time got job offers from two companies very interestingly one of it was Exxon then in Houston Texas to come in and work for them as uh, an associate engineer and they were going to pay me good money then in those days they were going to pay me about forty thousand dollars per annum uh, that was uh, in 1980 in 1981 and then I was interviewed by this environmental company who was into waste management a more than 50 year old company that was the number one in the US and the position they had for me was uh, a, 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 a research engineer however the pay was about 50% of what Exxon was offering me in fact it was almost one third of what Exxon was offering but I was so fascinated by the fact that it's an environmental company that I decided to go for it so I went to work. The employment agent who placed me in the two companies got angry with me because they get, they get paid based on the percentage of salary I was earning. And here was a company offering me $44,000, another company offering me $18,000. And I opted to take the one of $18,000, which was in fact about 60 miles from my home. Why the other one was about five miles from my home, so it was, it was, it was costing more to get to work. And so the, the agency was very unhappy, and they said, look, why did you do this? And I said, look, I have a passion for environment, and I'm going to work there. And uh, I know that it was destiny. Engineer Anthony Ojechina has had a robust career starting from 1980 as an environmental consultant in the United States. He is one of the pioneer environmental consultants to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, US EPA. Ashiwaju Ojeshina worked with leading environmental firms in the USA and rose to the position of president and chief executive officer within 10 years. As a young man at the age of 30, I became a vice president of a major environmental corporation in the US. Um, in a society where people had believed then that a black man could not get to that level. Um, it was a good memory because sometimes I ran into people, black people, when they found out that, that I was a vice president of that company, which most people knew about, SLT, the initial reaction is you are a token. You know, what they call a token in the U.S. is somebody that is there not because you, <coughs> you deserve to be there, but because that company has to meet a certain quota system of blacks. Yeah. And then when they now investigate and find out what I had done within the company and how I had been the first person in 11 years to develop a product in the company, and then they start to marvel and then they start to identify. But I think the beauty about it is that I use that to, 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 in a way, preach to a lot of young ones that you, can, you are the only person that can limit yourself. If you're determined and focused, and if you work hard, it has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Because God that has done that has also planted the same brain for us and everybody else. It's just a matter of creating the opportunity for yourself and being determined and focused on what you want to achieve. So that was a very, very interesting part of my life. I was young. Yes. I used to get angry a lot then. I used to get angry because I couldn't understand why I can be working with a colleague. I am even doing performing better than the colleague. And the things that are supposed to be mine are not being given to me yes. because of the color of my skin. And I fought it. I fought it to a point that the companies that I was working for had to accept it and say, this one is stubborn. This patriotic Nigerian soon realized the need to begin homecoming. He therefore established his own firm in the USA with an arm in Nigeria as headquarters. He has since successfully consulted for the World Bank, UNEP, UNIDO, UNDP, ADB, US EPA, Federal Ministry of Environment in Nigeria, 
Chevron Nigeria Limited, Mobile Producing Nigeria PLC, Shell Production Development Corporation, and from Company USA, and so on. Anything that you're going to do, infrastructure wise or structure wise, that's going to be imposed on the environment has to be planned properly. The, the beginning of it all, okay, is that the government must have a plan when it comes to housing. What do I mean by that? There is something called zoning. There should be a zoning law. The zoning law will determine what kinds of buildings go where. For instance, the zoning law will, will establish, for instance, that residential buildings can only be here. Commercial buildings can only be here. Industrial buildings can only be here. So that's going to be the fundamental understanding as part of a master plan. And then it must now be followed up and monitored. Then for the individual builder, there are certain permits that you must get before you build. A large number of companies have benefited from the immense experience and professionalism of this manager par excellence, whom and abroad. His publication on environment management, including test books and conference papers, are essential authorities among the academic and professionals in the U.S. He authored the first and famous comprehensive quality control manual for the manufacturing and installation of geomembranes for landfill applications, that is, friction flex, with U.S. and international patents. Ojeshina is an household name among the states in America as he was responsible for the formulation of environmental policies and rules and regulations for several of them. Back in Nigeria, he was the lead consultant in preparing the Environmental Impact Assessment EIA guidelines and procedures, as well as establishing the EIA Secretariat for the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, FEPA, now Federal Ministry of Environment. Engineer Anthony Ojeshina was the principal consultant that conducted the national refrigerant management plan studies for eliminating ozone depletion substance for UNDP in Nigeria. He also conducted the Nigerian study on greenhouse gases from solid waste for UNEP. Ojeshina has the best of specialization in his field, which includes waste management, environmental engineering, manufacturing, construction management, remedial engineering and remediation, oil pollution remediation, water and sanitation engineering, and air pollution emission detection. Engineer Anthony Ojeshina was the managing director and Chief Executive Officer of the Prosperous Global Environmental Technology Limited, an international consultancy firm before his appointment as the Pioneer Commissioner for the Environment in Ogun State. He set up the Ministry of Environment and put it on a sound footing. One of his popular programs as commissioner was the community-based waste management program that changed the face of major cities in the state. Then it was fondly called Not in My Backyard. For the feat performed between 2003 and 2007 as commissioner, he won numerous credible awards locally and internationally. At a birthday ceremony of his, the Ugo State Governor, Otumba Benga Daniel, his ally and political leader, gave more insight into the political personality of Ashiwaju or Jeshina. We were going to do microcredits. We thought that we wanted to do microcredits and we thought that we had to do it statewide, put some money, you know, something similar to what uh, uh, I think Arukong is the one doing this now, yes. And so we, we then had a challenge that microcredit had never been successful in Nigeria. 
in all the places where they have done microcredit, the money never came back. Okay, so we thought that, all right, if we give the money, a lot of the money is going to come back. Let us see how some of the money can come back so that we can continue to turn around the funds. And that is how uh, Prince Nick says he has a friend of his that he wanted to bring to come and see me. I said, hey, okay, no problems. So he then went one day and brought Mr. Adeshino. I then started laughing. I said, didn't Adeshino tell you how we have been? He said, you didn't say anything. Then he just said, okay, you want to take me to Otsuda Regla Gade, let's go there. So he then came and then we took it off from there. So, Mr. Adeshino then started teaching us how to do microcredit. There was uh, a model which was going on somewhere in Edo State, which we brought, and we were going through it, how we're going to organize, uh, how we're going to go to the markets, give the money to market women, how we're going to go to other traders, assist them, how we're going to go to the books and cannabis villages, and so on and so forth. And we found out that his uh, methods was something that's worth trying. And so we started the microcredit process through the instrument of Mr. Tony Adeshino. So many people here do not know this bit. And every single day we learn something a little bit more. And that was how Mr. Adeshino became once again part and parcel of our machinery. And I must say that being somebody who was uh, quite an enigma in the areas of environment, that is his specialty. It was because of him and the competencies that he, I knew he could display that we started the Ministry of Environment in the United States. <laughs> as a matter of fact, you know, as a pioneer commissioner for environment, uh, he was the one who came with all the principles. At that time, 2003, there was nothing like a railway ministry in the United States, and nobody knew how to run, organize, or arrange it until he came. And I must give uh, uh, all the kudos to him that he ran the ministry. And he remained what you can refer to as one of the guiding lights of the inner caucus of our administration. Governor Daniel also exposed how much spiritually inclined the engineer could be even as a singer. He brought the church band actually. Yes, uh, that is also quite important. Um, it was when we were trying to set up the campaign and then uh, one Friday he said to me you want to set up a musical campaign team. I said, yes. He said, it has some boys that he thinks we can use. I said, we boys. He said, yeah, the man is praying for him in his church, in his church somewhere, in Becky or somewhere. He said, they normally, you know, do uh, some people spirituals in Lekki and so on and so forth. I said, okay, bring them. <laughs> Engineer Antonio Jeshina is a pastor of the Miss Pem Bible Church International Headquarters Assembly. And when the Uluwu of Owu Oba Dr. Adigbo Ega Dosumo and the Balogun of Owu Chief 
Olusegun Obasanjo, a former president of Nigeria, found him pretty worthy to become an Owu chief. The installation of the Ashiwaju was given a Christian color. <laughs> He is also the Osi Balogun of Eromo. Ashiwaju Ojeshina has served as a board member of the Lagos Mega City Authority of the Federal Government. He was chairman of the board Glanfield Antofin Insurance Company Limited, a 53-year-old company owned by Odra Investment Company Limited. Anthony Ojeshina is the director of so many companies, including South Resources Limited. Level 4 Resources Limited, a venture capital company, and MSI Global Concept Limited, a waste management company. He is the chairman board of trustee DS Adegbenro Foundation, a member of the People's Democratic Party, engineer Ojeshina, was the chairman advanced team of the governorship campaign committee 2006. 2007 that worked for the second term of Otunda Binga Daniel. He served as Vice Chairman Iwikoro Local Government Collegiate and Vice Chairman Senatorial Elders Council Ogo Central PDP. So let me assure you that for Mr. Ojeshino, he's just to start. There are quite a number of things that I see happening to him very, very soon and we should not be surprised. Yes, he has a divine call. So I believe there's still a law that I can offer. Yes, sir. Uh, in the area of governance, both at the federal level and at my state, I would rather start with my state now. Because they, I have been in a system, I lived in the U.S. for 21 years, in a system where I've seen the, the, the integration 
okay, between governance and society are the things that are critical that government must do and the kind of education, awareness, enlightenment that are critical that the people should be given so that there could be a synergy yes. between government, governance and the people being governed. And I still see a lot of gap in that area. Uh, I see gap uh, a lot of time because we still have a young democracy. But I think what is most important is once you are able to identify the gap, how do you fill that gap? Uh, and that is a major reason why I'm offering myself uh, to serve in my state as a gubernatorial aspirant under the PDP party. Uh, I have been involved in governance for four years with Dr. Mabuga Daniel, uh, the great governor of Ogo State. And uh, I can say that uh, the government that was run when I was in office for four years and probably still run today is a, a government that had focus in terms of people development, in terms of infrastructure development, in, in terms of trying to to build a society uh, that can be self-sustainable or self-sustaining. And so my interest is to come in as governor of, of a state by the grace of God and, and, and create a very good marriage between governance, government and the governed. Make everybody to realize that they have a role to play. Because if there's cooperation between government and the governed, if there's cooperation, then there's better development. And that is key. And so my goal and objective is to come in, go through a lot of education, sell people on what I want to do, ensure that what I want to do, people understand it first and foremost. Ashwaju Anthony Ojeshina is married to Yeye Olubome Ojeshina with four children. Yeah.